Looks like the holes in that puzzle are there to stay. The pot was cold, and the stew inside wasn't cooked. It's likely that poor Giselle was slow cooking it before she got snapped. What a waste. What a pleasant activity. Of course, you'll find the record player only to find the records weeks later in some random box. The general store, along with several more infrastructures in the area, had been acquired by wealthy industrialist William J. Hamilton. Perhaps the village should be rechristened Hamiltown. It felt like old people were all these walls could see for years. The Lachances could hardly be blamed for wanting to freshen things up a bit. Carl had seen that kind of safe before. With its double-layered security system blending letters and numbers, its code couldn't be broken by the common burglar. What a mess! Clearly, there was some major revamping work underway here. The place looked barely habitable. Beautiful portrait of Gilles and Giselle bound together by the chains of conventional love. The cross looked after a marriage's well-being and served as a motivator to uphold the priest's sermons calling for more little worshippers on one hand and cautioning against guilty pleasures on the other. Indeed, the Lachances were still part of the God-fearing generation A nice white coating would restore the room to its charm of olden days. A nice white coating would restore the room to its charm of olden days. Carl was used to strange phenomena, but a chunk of ice like this, as if an iceberg came out of the ground, that was a first.
It was a classic Canadian house, except for the absent horde of kids that would normally be swarming about. The couple radiated something akin to lightheartedness, to freedom. Perhaps some people out there truly found a way to live happily ever after. A picture of Wilfred in his youth. Carl figured right away that the man must have been some kind of wildlife officer. All manners of clothing were gone, as if the Droids drove out of town with their closet in tow. The photograph was snapped not too far from here, Carl noticed. The couple seemed to be very good friends. Simone de Beauvoir, Claude Lévi-Strauss, Hannah Arendt, Roland Barthes. Carl was surprised by the literature filling this liberal-leaning bookcase. Could there really be intellectuals dwelling in this far-off land?
What was even the point of locking your door? If everyone hid their key in the same place? Carl was starting to feel like his investigator life lacked challenge. The house smelt like incense, the kind that reminds you of the good Lord, of peace. Religion was very influential throughout Quebec many years ago. Indeed, it was surprising that Carl did not come across a single chapel since arriving here. Good Paul VI, appearing papal. His crooked fingers gave the impression he was about to bestow a miracle. The perfect cookie-cutter Catholic family, most likely attending church every Sunday. Who knew that giraffes thrived in the North Pole? The craze for toys was stupefying. Love of religion and ancestors was rooted deep inside the hearts of Canadians of old, to which the Bedards appeared to be closely related. The family's mother must have spent her days washing the filth off her kids' diapers. Jean Delp been the closest man in the village to William Hamilton, otherwise known as Uncle Willie. Carl wasn't desperate enough to invade a village woman's privacy. A true Catholic always strives to keep lowly temptations at bay. Obviously, Carl thought, someone in this house wasn't doing a good job at upholding the Holy Bible's teachings.
There should be a law forbidding doctors from falling sick. In spite of Dr. Beaupre's goodwill, the place didn't look much like a physician's office. It could easily be mistaken for a sewing shop. For the one-eyed, or for other vision problems, the eye patch was the way to go. Carl got the trembles as he imagined the excruciating pain that kind of scalpel could no doubt inflict. Within these miserable walls, patients probably felt more like in a slaughterhouse than in a doctor's office. Someone had lost a few liters of blood here. Carl's first thought had been a lumber accident, someone's hand cut by a saw, or a hunting accident. In any case, whoever had lost all this blood couldn't have gone far. Perhaps they were already dead. A chamber pot. Fortunately for Carl, inspecting it wouldn't further this particular investigation. A communist manifesto. Only a few years ago, this type of allegiance meant prison time. And even at present, the Western world was very wary of the Soviet threat. Why would the doctor own such a book? Dr. Beaupre had done his medical studies quite far from here. He was surely one of the first students out of the new campus to settle on the mountainside. Doctors used light reflecting frontal mirrors to look inside the patient's cavities. That was a bit unsettling, but back then it was pretty much always the case with medicine. The injured could be recognized by the large stains of red an informal nickname given to Merbroman, smudged all over their injuries. The good doctor, flanked by his beautiful spouse. Pure happiness, captured on cardstock. Carl recognized this woman's soulful eyes. Was it Dr. Beaupre who had hit him head on at the village border? There was no doubt that the doctor and Hamilton knew each other very well.
Carl felt like he knew the doctor now. His belongings had spoken lengths about him. But what Carl had heard worried him. 